come here, bro, come here, because we have to talk real quick, all right? I've been sitting here for hella long, and I almost lost my voice trying to think of an excuse as to as why the heck I built this deck. How do you lose your voice from thinking? I'm tired of you, little Timmy. You always come in the videos asking me all these questions, sullen judging me, and I don't have the answers for you, all right? I'm just an idiot that likes to slap punk on every deck that I see. <laughs> There's a guy in the comment section that makes a meme about it. So that's why we're here with this 50 card deck list. It's actually insane. The synergies is extremely good and I really enjoy playing this deck because I've been enjoying playing voiceless voice as you guys can see in the um, streams and stuff like that. Shout out to everybody that pulled up to the stream. Thank you for coming. So we're going to run it at 50. I'm going to break down the deck list and everything. But for this video, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to break down the hand traps that we use and then I'm going to take them off of the screen so that way you can see what you need for the engine and to actually play the deck. So that way you could choose whatever hand traps you want when you build the deck if you want to play it right so with that being said we're gonna run three maxi for maxi reasons no extra explanations for maxi get that thing out of here so we're gonna play two ogre there's no rabbit ogre there's no rabbit we're gonna play it in this deck for two reasons one we can search it we can search it with the jam dragon drive which is really cool and two um this thing is being slept on this thing is really good against uh, the mirror match because if we set a blessing or if we set a barrier and somebody ogres that is gonna it's gone basically it's a negate and pop for any of our back row spells it's the same thing for you bell if you bell activates the pain they're gonna bring the pain on to you but if you ogre the pain the pain is gone they can't inflict the pain to you so it, this thing is really good and it's being slept on for this meta right now i don't think i'm gonna play it in every deck but we do get the benefits of it being a level three tuner we can search it and it's a pop in the gate of a continuous spell or trap right so really good we're gonna run it out two, get it out of here we're also gonna run three ash blossom for ash blossom reasons we also get the benefit of it being a level three tuner so we could normal summon it and use it as synchro material because we play level 11 so we play level 10 tuner i mean synchro monsters and we have level sevens and level eight regular monster to synchro summon into right so uh, this thing is really good we're gonna get it out of here though and then we're gonna run one nebiru nebiru for nebiru reasons i feel like playing um max seeing a deck and not having at least one copy on the b roof feels kind of weird because for example if you're not gonna play a bunch of effect veilers when you max see your opponent during their turn what hand traps are you looking for because at that point in time you already build your board you might have the infinite impermanence on the ground but if you draw into it you can't use it so i think you should always have one copy on the b roof so that way your opponent has to worry about something when they're taking the max e challenge right so get this thing out of here then we're gonna run two super polys you could 100 percent run super poly at three i just run it at two for the ratios and because we're only playing two targets but you could definitely play it at three so you could see it more often if you like i'm just gonna run it at two then we're gonna run the two co by the grace for co by the great reason to stop the max e mostly because we do special summon a lot and i mean a lot so we're gonna run two copies of that and then for the last one we're gonna run two copies of the infinite impermanence that's pretty much it you could always run three copies of it but to keep the deck list at 50 which is actually looking consistent still we're gonna run it at two to get him out of here so there it is this is the whole engine the whole package these 35 cards are the most important cards for you to actually play the deck together so we're gonna run three lows because sometimes we might not even need to normal summon with the pump package because of emergency teleport i hope the thing comes to three at some point in time but because of that reason we could always normal summon the low and do the prayers combo that way not to mention that we're gonna draw cards with the punk engine so we might even join to our ritual shenanigans and stuff like that so we're gonna run her at three my you if you use foxy tune on her send her to the grave and you manage to ritual summon she's gonna special summon herself back onto the field as well so you could use her <laughs> as fodder to send to the grave yeah i wouldn't recommend doing that all the time though because you might need her in the hand so then we're gonna run one share Kasai. you know how that goes for the fusion summoning one wagon to search out the gems one by spider to search out the trap three uh sea aimings because it's the one car one and a half card combo i guess because you're gonna search out the foxy two most of the time we're gonna run the two deer nodes we're gonna run three safira because you know you activate her effect you're gonna send the spell to the graveyard you're gonna search out your ritual monster which is really good then we're gonna run one service dragon sage 
This thing is nuts. It's a level 7 with your level 3 tuners you can make by run to the floor. Just by sending two spells back to the grave and the thing special summon. So if you don't want to activate its effect to bring this thing on the field, you could always use it as a body, which is really cool. Then we're going to run the three Foxy Tunes, because Foxy Tune is basically, again, the one and a half, also, one and a half combo starter. Then we're going to run the Seraphis, only one copy of it, we don't need more than that. We're going to run two copies of the Skull Guardian, because guard me, please. Then we're going to run one Ad Ice Pendulum Graph Dragon, Dragon Graph. This thing, this thing is nuts. And I low-key forgot in one or two of the duels that we can search out the Ritual Spell with this thing, which made one of the duels extremely long for no reason then we're gonna run two preparations of rice because we have the right to prepare for our w's by searching out one of our ritual spells and a ritual monster then we're gonna run the punk jam extreme session because you gotta bump to the music i should take these w's and there it is prayers of the voiceless voice two copies i i low-key have a hate and love relationship with running this thing at two and three I low-key think 3 is best, but I like running the 2 for the ratios, but opening up with both of them in the hand is extremely annoying. So we're gonna run it at 2, then we're gonna run 3 variants of the Voiceless Voice, of course, we're gonna run 1 Blessing of the Voiceless Voice, and then we're gonna run 2 Emergency Teleport because it makes playing both engines way easier if you open up with it. We're gonna run the Dangerous Gabu because that's what we're gonna search with the Madame Spider, and then we're gonna run 1 Radiance of the Voiceless Voice, which is the trap, which is also really good. For the extra deck, we're gonna run the two Moon Dragons of the Swamp, we're gonna run the Garura, we're gonna run the Performa, Odd Ice, Metal Claw, what the heck is this doing here is what you're thinking, right? So this is the crazy thing. If this is on the field and you have Shere Kasai on the field, you activate this thing's effect, it's gonna place itself in the pendulum so you negated a spell, right? You could special summon this thing, it's a level 8, and you use it with the Shere Kasai to do your quadruple bounce back to the hand, which is nuts. I haven't done it yet, but that's why that thing is in there. Then we're gonna run one Rising Carp, we're gonna run the Hero of Arc Light, which mind you, if you make the Hero of Arc Light and then you use it as material to like Link Summon or something, or if it gets destroyed, then you get to search out a Ritual Monster or Spell. So this thing, we get multiple benefits out of it. Even if you activate its effect in the gate and it's sent to the graveyard, you can search, which is tough. And you make it with the low in any one of your level 3 tuners. We're gonna run the Punk Jam Dragon Drive. Do you have your license? I have to check that. And this thing is tough because it's basically a part of our combo. We only run copy of it though. We're gonna run the Baron de la Flor because level 3 tuners level 7s. We're gonna run the Sorcerer Supreme 7 Chen Ying because it's also one of the best level 10s to play. And you know, if you're gonna banish a card or whatever, you get the multiple benefits of it. But I don't really go into this thing as much. I haven't gone into it at all since I was playing the deck, so if you want to ch change this for something else, do so I don't think it's going to bother you a lot, it's going to be fine. Then we're going to run one Chaos Angel because we do play level, you know, light monsters, so even with your level 3s, you're going to get one of the two benefits of it. We don't really get both benefits, but you might get one or two, one of the benefits, so we're going to play that, banish a card, whatever. Then we're going to run the Yukioi Punk Amazing Dragon, my favorite card in the deck. You're gonna bounce four cards with this thing, or you could use it to special summon one of your punk monsters from the graveyard back onto the field. We're gonna run the Psychic and Punisher, which is one of the reasons why we win so many games sometimes. IP Mask Karenita, one Dynamondo, you don't need more than one unless you're playing against Cast, and if they get rid of it, they get rid of it. Then we're gonna run one SP Little Knight, and one Appaloosa Ball of the Goddess. So that is the whole engine, that is the extra deck, and that's how we're playing. There's a lot of synergy within the deck that you're gonna see as we go over the deck list. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the content, please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe, because I would greatly appreciate it. Enough with the yapping, let's get into the replay. All right, familia, here we are for replay number uno, number one of the day. And I also wanted to let you know, all of these replays are from before. The season just started like one or two days ago. Um, these are before this is in all of these replays are like in master 2 master 3 so we're gonna get into it So we're going first just to show you how the deck works We're gonna activate the various of the voices voice We're gonna search out the service to the hand We're gonna activate the foxy soon send it to the graveyard send the load to the graveyard Right here, we're gonna send it to the graveyard. Special summon the CM and activate the CM and get the Shara Kasai. Normal summon the Shara Kasai, use this effect. So we could use both of these monsters to go into the Rising Carp, bring it out here. It's mine. We're going to activate the Rising Carp, get it out of here. Special summon the 
Dear No Special Summon the Wagon. We're gonna activate the Jam Extreme Session. Most of you have seen this already. Now we're gonna activate the Sephira because if we're gonna draw cards, I'd rather activate Sephira now, bring this to the hand, and send the spell to the graveyard so that way we don't draw into them, right? Because then it kills our combo. So we're gonna do it like that in that order. We're gonna use both of these monsters to go into the Jam Dragon D Drive. Do you have your license? I gotta check that. Activate this effect, pay the 600. Activate the Deer No Special Summon the Sharaka side. Cause you might wanna bounce some cards back. Give me that is mine. We're gonna search out the Madame Spider. We're gonna draw a card cause we pay taxes. We're gonna draw unfortunately to another barrier, but it's fine. We're gonna banish the Deer No. Special Summon the Madame Spider, getting ourselves the Dangerous God Boo cause I'm feeling dangerous. And we're gonna draw into the Super Poly. So here we're going to activate the Seraphis. We're gonna send two spells back into the deck. So that way we could special summon it. We're going to activate the uh, saf Safari. And then we're going to use the Jam Dragon Drive as material to go into the Skull Guardian here. Bring it out. Now the Skull Guardian gets to activate the load that we sent to the graveyard. Gets to activate and come back onto the field as well. Bring it out here. And now we get to search out for our Pendulum Graph Dragon. We're going to activate the Lost Effect. We're going to set the Blessing down. And then we're going to use both of these monsters here to go into Baron de la Flor. So from here on out, we're going to use both of these monsters as well. And we're going to go into the Dynamondo. Now, most of the time, the main reason why you don't go into the Dynamondo is because you don't have any way of protecting yourself from a call by the Grave. But now we do. So we're going to proceed, we're going to set down our two back row and our turn. So this is the board. We have the Dynamondo, we have the Yukio Sharakasai, we have a Core by the Grave, a fake infinite impermanence at home. I didn't even set down the Super Poly just to show you guys that we don't even need the Super Poly with the way that everything works. So here we're going to activate the Dynamondo during the standby phase, special summon the Skull Guardian back onto the field, special summon the Low back onto the field, Low's going to activate, we're going to set the trap in the back. So here he's gonna activate that Forbidden Droplet and I don't think he had monsters to send or if he did I think it was like a Sheridan he didn't want to send it yet because he doesn't have any way of fusion summoning. So he sends two traps to activate the Forbidden Droplet which we can negate because you didn't send a monster. So now he's gonna activate the Rainbow Bridge here to search out the field spell. I'm going to allow that. Because we already wasted one of our Omni Negates on this thing because we don't want to get negated of course. So he's going to search out one of the Turtles and the Pressure Planet Race Off. Get this thing out of here. He's going to activate the Pressure Planet Race Off. We're going to activate the trap so we could pop that thing to basically negate it from searching. Stop that right there. So here he's going to activate the Sharon, Special Summon the Sharon, sending a Shadow Beast to the graveyard. They're going to activate the Shadow Beast to draw a card. And then they're going to activate the Tear Limits Heartbeat to recycle one of the traps back to the hand. I'm going to let it happen because we're not worried about the trap whatsoever right now. And if he draws a card, he draws a card. What are we supposed to do? He gets the reinforcement of the army, which I believe is what he drew. To get the Rhino Heart, no more summon the Rhino Heart, activate the Rhino Heart's effect. I'm going to activate the Blessing here. I'm going to activate the Dangerous God Boo. Now, the reason why I kind of goofed in a sense and why I'm using the Dangerous God Boo now as well is because this thing. We could have essentially, where well, we needed a space in the Pendulum Zone. So when I activate this thing effect in the gate, we put it back there, right? So don't put stuff in one of your Pendulum Zones when you're playing this deck. So here we're gonna gain light points, we're gonna negate this thing, we're gonna use the low to go into the pendulum graph dragon. Bring that thing out here, clean animation. Rhino Heart gets negated, he's gonna use both of these monsters here to go into the time key redoer, do it again. Now the thing here is um, he's gonna get burned for every time that he brings a special summon monster from the extra deck. So the reason why this thing is on the field is because if he activates a spell, like I said, we can activate this thing's effect, put it in the back row, and special summon the level 8 from the extra deck, and then we get the quadruple bounce back on top of all of this. But he's basically going to go battle phase, slap over the Sherrick aside, and then he's going to use to go into the um, suit. So I don't know why he thought that I was going to let this rock, but he's going to activate the suits here after getting burned for 300. And we're going to negate that thing with the Baron de la Flor. Stop that right there. It, even if he managed to play past this, he still has to send a, a tier limits card to the graveyard. And that call by the grave is going to be the nail in the coffin. 
So you see how crazy the deck is and how well it synergizes together? It's actually really cool. So with that being said, let's continue. Alright, my boys, here we are for replay number two. Number two, number two of the day. And we're going second, and this is actually the mirror match. So here they're gonna activate the pot of extravagance. I'm gonna throw out the max C because they might draw into the ash if I don't throw it out now. And if they have the ash, it is what it is, right? So for once, my maxi actually goes through. They're going to activate the Sephira here. Send it to the graveyard. Send the spell to the graveyard as well to search out the Skull Guardian. Guard me, please. He's going to normal summon the low for the low. Activating the barrier. Barrier activates. Search out for the blessing. So he's going to activate the Sephira. Basically using it so that way they can go into the Skull Guardian here. Ritual summoning it using the Hariachia. So here we're gonna draw one card off of it. He's gonna activate this Cold Guardian, getting the service to the hand. He's gonna act, well, set the Blessing, activate the Blessing. He's gonna bring the Safari back to the hand. And if I'm not mistaken, that's their board, right? So we only got one card off of the Maxi, and he has his board, he has plays. So here we're going to the Cold by the Grey. I'm gonna start off with the pre-preparations pre of right so I could prepare for my W. As we get the service to the hand as well, activate the Prayers. We're gonna send the um, service to the graveyard, using it as material to go into the Skull Guardian. And I kind of did this on purpose, you're gonna see why later as we activate the Skull Guardian. I expected him to do this. I legitimately expected him to activate this to negate this now and pop it because we don't have the low on the field. But that's why we have the prayers in the graveyard. So I said, okay, let me try and bait it out and it worked. So we got negated and popped, get me out of here. Now we get to activate the prayers and we get to special summon the second copy of it back onto the field. So now we normal summon the low, we have our army negate, he's gonna activate the blessing. I'm gonna let it happen. Because I don't wanna negate the blessing, now it is what it is, he's gonna send the low to the graveyard. And he's gonna go into the service. So now he could basically negate and banish a special summon, which is fine with us as we set the barrier in the back. He's gonna activate the low, we're gonna call by the grave the low. What? What is he doing? Yes. Why am I <laughs> called by the grave in the low? Because our low doesn't need to be activating anything. We already activated the effects that we want. We mainly want her on the field for the negation with the score guardian. Because after this, we don't need to play voice as voice anymore, right? We're playing the superior deck here, the superior version. So we're going to give her the finger, get it out of here. We're going to activate the barrier. With the barrier, we're going to search out the Sephira. We're going to activate the emergency teleport, special summon the CA man, and we can speed this up. Activate the CA man, get the Falky Tune, activate the Falky Tune, send the card to the graveyard, bring the Sherrick aside. Sherrick aside, we're going to go into the Rising Carp, Rising Carp, activate, get it out of here, special summon the Dino, special summon the Wagon. Wagon going to activate, get the Jam Extreme Session, do you listen to the music? Get myself the Jam Dragon, drive him, drive him recklessly, because it's going to activate the Cerebase, but no I'm not, I have my license, I activate the Voiceless Voice, that's cool. So we're gonna negate that thing, unfortunately it doesn't get popped, we are gonna play life points with the Jam Dragon Drive, activating the Deer Note because it was sent to the graveyard, special summon the Sherrick aside back onto the field, we're gonna search out the Madan Spider, we're gonna draw a card here, we're gonna draw into the um, Arai's Pendulum Graph Dragon, so we're gonna activate the field spell, banishing the trap to special summon the Madan Spider, unfortunately we already have the trap in the graveyard so I can't pay to draw. So we're gonna go into the Psychic Camp Punisher, activate the Psychic Camp Punisher, we're gonna banish the Sherrick aside so that we could get rid of the Skull Guardian here, get him out. Of course, that's gonna activate the Jam Extreme Session, it's gonna also activate or prompt the prayers of the Voiceless Voice, so they get to special summon another Skull Guardian onto the field, that's no problem. As you activated something in response to my field spell, the Jam Dragon Drive comes back onto the field. I activate the Psychic Camp Punisher, slap over this thing, slap him for the 4500, give him the 50. <laughs> the 50 is crazy. Why does that thing have 50 attack and then we're gonna slap him for game? Because we're playing the superior deck. Now that was that was a really good duel. I was actually trying to bait out as much shenanigans, shenanigans as I could, but I think we did pretty well there. So let's continue. Oh, right game. Here we are for replay number three, number three of the day, and we're going second against your bell. Uh, yeah, it is your bell. So here they're gonna activate the Paris race map, getting themselves the D Lotus, Monkey Samsara D Lotus. Normal summoning the Dark Beckon and Beast, getting themselves the opening of the Spirit Gates on his Rock League. He's gonna activate, well, not activate, but it's gonna prompt to get the second normal summon. They're gonna normal summon the D Lotus. We're gonna ask that. 
immediately. It's one of the best ashes that we could do right now based on how they're playing. So he's gonna activate the opening of the spirit gates. Even if he wants to bring it back, it can't be activated again, so we're fine with all of this. He's gonna send it back, especially some of the D-Loaders, but we're fine with it. Because we know he's gonna go into the unchanged Lord of Yama. Yama me. So he's gonna activate the Lord of Yama's effect, getting himself the unchanged souls of Sharvara. Sitting down a back row, which is a Harpy's Feather Duster, he's gonna pop it to special summon the Sharvara. Use both of these monsters to go into the Unchained Souls of Rage, because now he's angry. Activating the Sharvara, setting down the escape of the Unchained, so he could escape from taking this L. Setting down two back row and ending their turn, right? So it's not that the great, complete Ubel thing. We're basically playing against Unchained right now. As we activate the Emergency Teleport, special summon that wagon. Um, I had a feeling that one of these had to be an infinite impermanence, so I purposely special summon the wagon first, even though I know he can get negated, I want to go for the draw here, because <laughs> I knew that he would, I had a feeling this was going to happen. So here we're going to join to another imp emergency teleport, which is hilarious. So we're going to activate the Foxy Tomb here, send it to the graveyard, special summon the deer gnome, and we're going to use both of these to go into the Jam Dragon D Drive, right? We gotta drive our opponent crazy as we attempt to win the game. We're gonna activate the deer now, special summon the wagon back onto the field. And with the drive, we're gonna search probably the Madame Spider. No, no, we search our CM and I haven't done that. So he's gonna activate the escape of the Unchained, popping the wagon, sad times. Activate the um, Unchained Souls of Rage, activating the Lord of Yama so he could Yama me one more time. So now he gets to special summon the rage back onto the field, double the anger, he's gonna get the D Lotus back to the hand for follow up next turn, activating the source of rage using this card right here, the Jam Dragon Drive, to go into the SP, the littlest knight, aka Stuart D Little. So he's gonna banish the Jam Dragon Drive from the graveyard, which is a good banish. We're gonna normal summon the CA and activate his effect, get the Deer No. Activate the Deer No, show them the Foxy Tomb so we can special summon the Foxy Tomb. Now we're gonna activate the Emergency Teleport. Bring out the Sherek aside. Now, he has 4,000 life points or whatever. I didn't think that I would be able to make it to um, lethal damage from here. Also, I was running low on time. So I had to basically slap him, activate the Foxy Tomb, slap him for the 600, slap him for the 1200. So I wanted to make sure that we could deplete resources if we weren't going to win the game now. So I'm going to go into the Amazing Dragon. We're not going to bounce anything back. I thought that this would be like an infinite impermanence, but it did stop glowing. So we're going to special summon the wagon back onto the field, which we never got to activate. So we're going to activate it now, getting ourselves the Point Jam Extreme Session. And it was a freaking Cosmic Cyclone. So now he pays a thousand life points to basically banish our jam session so we're not listening to the music anymore. I'm going to activate the Sharika side. Use both of these monsters to go into the rising card. Why? Because I want a trap. We're gonna have to set up a small board here. So we're gonna special summon the Madan Spider and the CA and Madan Spider activate. Get ourselves the fake infinite impermanence at home. And then we're gonna use both of these to go into the SP, the littlest knight. Bring it out here, activate its effect, get the gates out of here, close them things, and set down our dangerous Gabu. So here we know that he has the follow, right? He's gonna normal summon it. We're going to basically infinite impermanence that so he's gonna use that thing to go into the typhoon so he goes into the typhoon he's really smart battle phase slaps over the sp little knight now we're left with this thing which is gonna activate this thing's effect get rid of the material and bounce back the mana spider to my hand which is not the greatest of things because we already search out the trap we get a pendulum graph here and here's where i goof right this duel could have probably ended way sooner but I forgot that I can search out the ritual spell with this thing just by sitting down in the corner. So because of that, the dude did become longer. It was basically stale. So we're going to speed all over this. He's going to slap the Madan Spider in the face, get it out. So here we also, I don't think we drew into anything. We're going to get the effect veiler and face. We're going to pass it back on to them. I think they drew another back row or something like that, which they're going to set. No, battle face, slam it for the 2900. It doesn't even set anything. So this is when I realized that I'm an idiot, so I decided to activate, I'm like, yo, what am I doing? He activates the maxi, which didn't matter, so now we're just gonna set the effect bailer down, because it's all that I can do. I'm gonna activate this thing's effect to finally search for the ritual spell, but of course by now he has an ash. So at sad times, we get ash here. The turn changes, I don't think he drew into anything again. 
Yeah, he's just gonna sit on the back row, beat us down with the they beat down the fake Baylor with the Typhoon. Now we get to finally search out the prayers here because that's all we need. We need to pray right now. As we join to the chat, we activate the prayers. It has a freaking Sullen Judgment. Sullen Judgment because Timmy be out here. Now we get to activate the service, special summoner, set down the pendulum grab, search out the other copy of the prayers that we just sent back into the deck. So now we activate the trap. Here he finally gets to play the game. Normal summons a deep lotus. I activate the trap. Trap, we're gonna show him the graph, send the graph back into the deck so we can special summon the low. The low is gonna activate. He has an infinite impermanence for the low. So of course we're gonna activate the Cerebus, bring it back to the hand, special summon the score guardian, and now we have the negate. So now if he activates the deep lotus, we negate it and we can slap down the phantom or typhoon and we can win the game. Clearly, we could have probably won this way earlier, but I'm an idiot. So let's continue. All right, gang, here we are for replay number four. Number four of the day, we're going first. I believe it's also against you, Bell. So here we're going to normal summon the CM and activate the CM and get the deer note to the hand. We're going to activate the Foxy Tune, send it to the graveyard, send the deer note. We're going to special summon the Shark side. And we're doing the, we're going to do the standard punk combo, get the rising card, special summon deer note wagon, search out the jam extreme session, put it out here. We're going to use both of these, start driving, pay the life points, activate the deer note, special summon the Shark side, get ourselves the Madame Spider, activate the jam extreme session. We're not activated, we're going to draw. So now we have two. Ritual monsters. We can set down the blessing just in case we join to the low. So here we're gonna banish the deer no special summon the Madame Spider, search our dangerous gabo because we're feeling dangerous. Draw another card. We're gonna draw into a service. And then we're gonna use both of these monsters to go into the psychic and the punisher. Bring it out here. Now we get to activate the blessing. We're gonna send the service to the graveyard by using it as material to go into the skull guardian. Which we haven't even, well we could activate this effect, we're gonna search out for the low, right? Now we're gonna activate the blessing, we're gonna bring the service back to the hand, which is insane. We're gonna set down the Odd Eyes Pendulum Grab Dragon, activate this effect, searching out the prayers of the voice's voice, bring this back and that's our board. So you know, it looks a little awkward, it's like what the heck are we looking at? But we're actually gonna start building our, our board during their turn with a normal summon as we throw out the max C. They can't really do nothing about it. They don't have anything. Activating the Nightmare Throne. He's gonna get himself Dark Beckoning Beast here. He's gonna normal summon Dark Beckoning Beast. We're not even gonna negate that. We're just gonna activate the blessings. Actually, we are. We are gonna negate it with the Dark um, with our dangerous Gabu. And we don't even gain light points from negating that, which is good for the psychic camp punisher. We're gonna send the low to the graveyard so that way we could bring the odd eyes pendulum grab dragon onto the field, which is why we still have the Sherika site out here. That thing is negated, the low gets to activate, we get to special summon the low, activate the low, set the trap. Now we can pop two cards, which we're going to do immediately here, pop both of these cards. He's gonna basically send two cards back so he can get a phantom um, of the bell. That's gonna, that's gonna have to burn because they special summon from the exit deck, they're gonna activate the nightmare pain here. And then he uses this thing to go into a typhoon. So I'm like, okay. So he's still gonna burn for the 300, activate the triple tactic thrust, we're gonna negate that thing, stop that right there. So now that we get to put this thing in the bag, we get to special summon the fusion monster from the extra deck, but of course, no we can't, because our opponent is gonna screw. So you see how even when you end up with like an awkward unfinished board, you can finish the board as soon as your opponent normal summons with the blessing, which is insane that you can do that. So with that being said, let's continue. Hi, uh, my boys. Here we are for replay number cinco, number five of the day. We're going up against your bell once again. Um, and uh, here we didn't make the. He did manage to stop us, Loki. So we're gonna activate the barriers of the voice of voice, getting the load to the hand. We're gonna activate the Foxy Tune, send it to the graveyard, send the infinite impermanence. And if you're wondering why he didn't send the low, it's because it's not always great to send the low, right? We don't have any way of actual ritual summoning by now, yet at least. So I wanna play it safe and keep the low in the hand. So here we're gonna special summon the Shara Kasai, use the Shara Kasai and the Madame Spider to go into the Rising Carp. And here, standard combo, get him out of here, special summon the DNA in the wagon, get ourselves the jammer stream session, set it down, use both of these monsters to go into the damn dragon drive, activate the deer nose, special summon the sheriff aside, we're gonna get ourselves a CM into the hand, we're gonna join Max C, we're gonna banish the deer nose, special summon the CM and prayer taxes, get a foxy tune, we're gonna join to another low. 
which is not the greatest. So now we have to use both of these monsters here to go into the Psychic and Punisher. We're gonna normal summon the low and we're gonna activate the low to set down a blessing. And then with both of these monsters, we go into the Hero of the Arc Light. We're gonna activate the blessings here, return the low back to the hand. And there's no point in having her there. Activate the cover of the grave. And it's actually really good that we brought her back to the hand. I don't know why he didn't bestial that, but it is what it is. He's gonna bestial the Foxy Tomb. Especially summon this thing onto the field. The bestial Magna Hug, getting himself the Deer Storm. So now I'm a little nervous because this these are the cards that basically do counter our um, prayers uh, engine, right? Our voices voice engine. So here he's gonna add, show us the spirit of your bell. Show us the gruesome grave squirmer. So he's gonna special summon the phantom of your girl. He's gonna go battle phase. So of course I'm gonna gain the attack boost, but this is where he goofed. He slapped the hair of, of Arc Light and now we get the benefit of activating that thing's effect. We're gonna search out the Skull Guardian, which makes us live. As he normal summons, we activate the maxi, throw it out. I'm trying to bait out the Phantom of you Bell, which is going to activate. We're gonna call by the grave that thing. And now we get the multiple benefits. Cause he's gonna activate the Deer Storm to save the Phantom of your Bell from being negated, which is extremely smart, but now we don't have to worry about them activating those things on our low. So we're getting benefits even though they're dodging the negate. Chainly 5. So Jerusalem is gonna banish the Phantom of your Bell that's gonna dodge to cover the grave. We don't cover the grave anything, so nothing is negated. So the Maxi is now turning into popping a card, and with the blessings, we're gonna use the low to ritual summon the Skull Guardian onto the field. This deck, the, the synergy between this deck is tough. So he's gonna activate the spirit of your bell. We're gonna negate that because that means he's gonna search out the, the pain. Well, actually, no, we're not negating. I think we're searching here. Activate the low special summon it. We're gonna search out for the Seraph base. We're not even gonna stop him from activating this. Bring the old your bell onto the field. We're gonna activate the low here, setting down the trap. So now we have a pop card on the field and an Omni Negate on top of the Psychic and Punisher. He's gonna show us the Spirit of your Bell once again. Sending both of these, getting the Phantom of your Bell onto the field. He's gonna use both of these monsters to go into the Lord of Yama. Yama me. So he activates the Lord of Yama. We're gonna negate and pop that. Because we know he can't get any benefits from being popped now. So yeah, we're getting basically stopped in two things. We stop the search and we basically get the level 2 body out of here. So he gets, he's gonna special summon the Spirit of your Bell, getting himself the Nightmare Pain. He's gonna send two cards back, special summon the Phantom of your Bell. Use both of these monsters here to go into the SP, the Little Knight. Bring it out here. So now he activates SP Little Knight, he chooses to target the Blessing, which I'm perfectly fine with. So we're gonna leave that at that. And now he's gonna use both of these monsters to go into the Monk Raker of the Underworld, which it was kind of not the smartest thing to do, but that's what he does. He's gonna bring this thing back onto the field, send the Evely into the graveyard, and then he's scooped. Now, Nightmare Pain sets down... Okay, we can pop the Nightmare Pain, never mind. I will, cause I, I, for a second I was like, why did he scoop again? But the thing is that he knows he knows I have the trap. So if he says the Nightmare Pain in the back, <laughs> cause that's what he was trying to do the whole duel, was trying to bait out me popping something with the trap, so that way he could activate the Nightmare Pain. So now if he says the Nightmare Pain in the back, we use the trap, we pop the Nightmare Pain, and we win the game anyways. So with that being said, let's continue. All right, gang, here we are for replay numero six, number six of the day. I won't get to do the live gameplay today because I do have to work soon, unfortunately. I did want to show you guys this deck live, but it is what it is. Here they're going to activate the Beast of Rebellion, send it to the graveyard, getting this of the Beast of Magna Hut. Of course, they get the brand to regain. They're going to basically banish this thing. We're going to throw the Max C, but as regularly happens, we get hit with the Call by the Grave. I know two of the Max C in these replays went through, but they usually don't. So that thing is hit with the finger, negate the bug, stop that right there. Magna Hug gets his special summon. Now he gets to recycle the um, Lubellion, the Beast of Lubellion, back into the deck to draw a card, and then he's gonna search out during the end phase with the Magna Hug. So he draw one, he activates the Bonfire, so we're gonna negate that. Because at this point in time, I'm like, I don't know exactly what I'm playing against, but this should be Centurion, because you know they're playing Bestials. So here is end phase, they're gonna search out the Bestial Bow Drake. So here we have a decent hand on that, especially now with the Sapphira. Sar 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 
So they're gonna throw the maxi as I throw the emergency teleport. I'm gonna activate the second maxi. And I don't know if you noticed, but maxi was already fingered and I completely forgot that it got fingered. For some reason I forgot. So I low-key activated the emergency teleport thinking that I wasn't gonna give them an extra card. So now I'm, I'm just looking stupid. Because <laughs> clearly that thing got fingered during their turn, but I completely forgot. So I especially summoned the shark aside. Then I especially summoned the uh, CA, man. I activate CMN's effect. They're gonna activate the effect by Leona, so now I'm sad about that. It is what it is, though. Because we could have definitely made way different plays, started the combo way differently, but we're gonna activate the Shark Asai here. He's gonna banish the effect veiler to special summon the Bow Drake. And this is the perfect time for him to do this. Because now we're gonna go into the Rising Carp. And the Rising Carp is not a quick effect or anything. So he gets to activate the Bow Drake and basically banish. A rising carpet now he gets to draw a card with the, the um brandon regain as well so he recycles the effect veiler draws a card gets rid of the rising card now i activate the safira send the safira to the graveyard with the ritual spell get ourselves the score guardian activate the safira we have a normal summon yet by the way we're gonna use the foxy tune as material to get a score guardian onto the field bring it out here we're going to activate the Skull Guardian, he's going to activate the Brandon Regain to bring the Bridge to Magna Hut back onto the field, which we can't do nothing about, but we're going to let it rock. So here we're going to search the low, because again, we have a normal summon yet, he's going to activate the Bridge to Magna Hut, normal summon the low, set down the barrier, activate the barrier, getting ourselves the service to the hand. Service, we're going to set one of the emergency teleports and the ritual spell back to the deck to special summoning. So now we can beat over both of these monsters, get him out of here, one and two. And slap him for the 50. <laughs> Freaking 50, bro. 50 damage. So he is gonna search out the deal from doing the end phase with the Magna Hus effect. So now we have to worry about that thing, unfortunately. The first thing they're gonna start out is with the deal from banishing the Foxy Tomb. We're gonna activate the service. Immediately, he's gonna activate the Max C. We're not gonna negate it because all he's gonna get is one card off of this, anyways. So we're gonna special summon the service onto the field. He's gonna draw a card. Banish the Fox Tomb, he gets to draw a card, and then he gets to activate that regain to bring the Bishop Magna Hut back onto the field. So of course we're gonna negate that. Are you crazy? We're gonna stop you from drawing, we're gonna stop you from summoning, and then we get rid of the thing that's allowing you to do this? Yeah, that's definitely a negate. Negate and pop, normal summon the Primera, Primera activate, get himself the standards and Sterion, so he could stand on business. Activating his effect, he's gonna get rid of the draw and lock burst. Set that today in the back, special summon today, activate today's effect. Set down the gargoyle in the back, special summon the gargoyle, make it a level 4. And then he's gonna use both of these monsters here to go into the Chaos Angel. Which, goof, big goof. I mean, essentially, let me see. He shouldn't have, I hate the, the new update, but I'm pretty sure he shouldn't be protected. I'm pretty sure this still happens, but I think if you were to use Durstrom and, I think, uh, yeah, Durstrom and Primera, does this affect it still? I'm not 100% sure, but either way, he goes into that thing, we activate the service, we negate it and banish it, and what else is he supposed to do? Because <laughs> now he doesn't have a body with the Primera to Synchro Summon into anything, and if he waits during the next turn, he activates you there and make it a level 8, we're going to negate it and pop it. So we're gonna win the game regardless. So with that being said, let's continue. All right, familia, here we are for replay number seven, number seven of the day. After that, we got three more for you. Again, unfortunately, I can't get the live gameplay because I have to go to work. Now it'll be late, and then we're not trying to have that. So here we're gonna join to a cover the grave. We're gonna activate the Safira. They're gonna throw out the dimensional shifter. We are playing against Castira here. Luckily for us, we have the cover the grave because that thing alone will clap us. We will get smoked by the shifter immediately because we need the cards in the graveyard and all the extra shenanigans. So get it out of here. Now here, um, our hand is still a little bit awkward. We're gonna send the uh, prayers to the graveyard. We're gonna get ourselves the skull guardian to the hand. And here I accidentally clicked into go into battle phase. I swear to you, bro, I mistakenly clicked into battle phase. Now we're in the main phase two. I'm like, whatever. So now we just have to build the board because we could have probably won the game now. We're going to get rid of the Nibiru using this material to make the Guardian. And we have a normal summon here. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We have a normal summon here. So we made the Guardian. Guardian activate. We're going to get hit with the Cypher and Gamma. So never mind. 
actually it might have never yeah it might have never mattered that we skipped the battle phase so yeah never mind because that thing is gonna get popped and negated we are gonna activate the prayer so to special summon a seraphist normal summon the wagon getting ourselves the jam extreme session level seven level three like i said for ronda la floor it's all that we can do since we did get stopped with Ronda La Flor activate, pop the back row, which was a Kashira preparations. So we could have got to, actually no. So yeah, it didn't matter that we skipped the battle phase by mistake. He's gonna activate the schedule Kashira, special summoning, banishing the preparations, activating the birth here. We're gonna negate and pop the birth immediately. So why 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 would I let that happen? Why would I let that stay on the field? Now get in and pop it. So he of course he has a theosis. To special summon the unicorn, bro just probably drew that, I don't even know. So he's gonna get the copy of the birth again. I'm gonna activate the Joel and Lock Bird, which is not necessarily the greatest of activations, because they might not even add anything else to the hand, but I'm not trying to have that. As he goes and makes a big eye, he activates the big eye's effect, detaching the uh, unicorn, he's gonna take over the Baron on the floor, activate the birth bird, he's gonna special summon the unicorn back onto the field, and now we get slapped for the 2500. 3,000. He can't attack with this thing though, so end phase. So here, luckily for us, we drew into the emergency teleport. He can't activate the Baron de la Flor. He is going to activate the Castilla Birth here to banish three cards from my graveyard, which is fine with us because we're not planning on playing Voiceless right now. We're going to special summon the Sea Amen and we can speed this up from here. Sea Amen is going to activate, getting us to Sharak Asai. We're going to draw a card off for that. Yeah, he gets to activate the Unicorn. He's going to banish the Psychic and Punisher. Which is smart because at our life points, we can just make a Psychic and Punisher and win. But that's not what we need. We don't need that. So we're going to activate the Dino, special summon Sharak Asai. Activate Sharak Asai, going to the Rising Carp. Get the Rising Carp out of here as we join to the Barrier. Special summon Mana and Spider, pay taxes, get a dangerous Gabu. We're going to go into the Jam Dragon Drive. Activate the Dino, special summon the Rising Carp back onto the field. Set down the Barrier. And we can legitimately play Voiceless Voice from here. As we're going to normal summon the Ash. Use the Ash and a level 8 to go into the Amazing Dragon. Activate the Amazing Dragon. Bounce all of the three of these cards back into the hand. Activate the Rising Carp. Now our Amazing Dragon is double amazing. Because he gets to attack twice. Slap him once. And then slap him twice with the Amazing Dragon. GG. With 100 life points left. That must be so freaking frustrating, bro. With 100 life points, even though most of it I burned it myself. But so what? Let's continue. <laughs> yes, sir. Here we are for replay number eight. Number eight of the day. Not that we got two more for you guys. So here we're going first, and we're going to activate the Sephira. We're technically brick. We actually don't have any follow-up for that. We don't have a high enough level monster. We could, we could have used all three of these to ritual summon into the score guardian but that would have felt like a like three cards nah that's, that's kind of a waste so he's gonna normal summon the d lotus we're gonna throw the max c he has the ash for it like i said it's, i'm cursed so we're gonna activate the radiance here and we're gonna use this effect we're gonna send the score guardian back into the deck well actually we're gonna send the prayers my bad back into the deck special summon the low for the low, we're gonna activate low. We're gonna set down a blessing so that we could play. He's gonna activate the D Lotus. We're gonna ash that immediately. Immediately gonna ash that. Stop that right there. So he's gonna activate the Nightmare Pain. Nightmare Pain activate. He's gonna pop a Dark Monster so he can get himself the Spirit of Your Belt to the hand. He's going to send both of these monsters back into the deck so he can make a Phantom of Your Belt. Set down a back row. Now, if you're wondering. Why didn't I activate the blessing in response to the Phantom of your bell? Because I didn't want them activating this anyways and bringing the Spirit of your bell onto the field. It wouldn't have mattered. I would just... Because this is in defense, so he's not going to get rid of it. So he attacks into it and, you know, he passed it on to us. I'd rather just keep the low on the field so we could activate the low again. So here we get a Deer Note. We're going to activate the blessing. We're going to recycle the Sephira. He's going to infinite impermanence the low. And he's basically doing this to negate the trap. So he kind of smart on him, but I think that was a little too early to do that. Why not activate? Why not wait until I activate the trap? So we're gonna activate the Sephira, send the spell to the graveyard. We're gonna get ourselves the Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, activating the Sephira's effect. We're going to use the dragon as material to get a Skull Guardian out here. 
Now, yes, I know that we could have used the low and special summon the low back onto the field, but then he would have activated this to negate, and then I wouldn't get the low back onto the field, and then we won't have a negate here, right? So that's what I was thinking at the time as we get the attack, which is going to affect Baylor, um, our score guardian. So I'm going to negate it because we know for a fact he has nothing else. Now he's going to activate the Phantom of your bell. Which is fine with us, it is what it is, it's just gonna basically pop one, right? And then he's gonna special summon the OG you build onto the field, now we do get negated, our attack gets lower. So bring the OG you build onto the field, I'm gonna activate the trap for Funs and Giggles because it doesn't matter. But I'm still gonna make a Dynamundo, which is why I use the Pendulum Graph Dragon as material, so now we can just send it back into the deck, send back the OG you build. Now I didn't want to send out the pain. Because even if he does get the pain, there's nothing else for him to do. We basically got the advantage. I slap him for the 2200. And even if he draws a Dark Mountain to activate and pop, I'm going to wait until the standby phase and we're going to have the Omni in the game. So we're fine here. Bring it back onto the field. Bring the low back onto the field. With the low, we're going to set the barrier. So this is what I'm thinking, right? Even if he makes another Phantom of your Bell, we can pop it with the trap. And then if we activate this, we can negate it and pop it. So we are in an extremely good position here, as that's exactly what he does. He goes into the Phantom of your Bell. I'm going to pop that before he even activates. He doesn't even have any more bodies to make another one. He says that in the back row, and we know it's GG's from here. So here we go into the Super Poly, activate the Blessing, and it's like, what else are they supposed to do? So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. Right again, here we are for replay number 9, number 9 of the day, and it's almost the last replay, right? So here we're going to start off with activating the Jammer Queen session. I heard it's a little awkward, so we're going to special summon the CMA. I don't usually like drawing cards this early, because, you know, it, it, the ratios aren't that great for you to draw. But luckily, we drew into the low, so we're going to send the Maxi to the graveyard. We're going to activate the low, and he's going to activate the Cypher and Gear Gamma. So if you're wondering why I did the combo like this, because we could have continued with the Sherak aside, is because we can basically get the Omni Negate out here, which is going to protect our pump plays if we do manage to open up with a hand like this. But he does have a Gamma, which is one of the worst hand traps for us to get hit by. Because even if this thing, if they negate it with an Ash, Valor, Infinite Impermanence, it stays on the field. So we could always use it as material if we could manage to get the Sephira or one of our Ritual spells. But... It gets negated and popped, sadly. We can't do anything about that right now. But what we could do is continue making our pump plays. As we activate the Shark aside, use both of these monsters going to the Rising Carb. We're going to draw a card, get both of these out of here. So now I know for a fact, we're not drawing any more cards, so we're just playing Punk. As we go into the Jam Dragon Drive, activate the Dino, special summon the Shark aside back onto the field. Get the Ghost over to the hand, go into the Psychic can double the Punisher, set it back on our turn. So, uh, our board is not great, but at least we have ways to defend ourselves. We have the Super Poly, we have the Julio uh, the Dangerous Gabu, and the Gold Ogre, right? So here he's going to get the Bonfire to the hand, well, activate the Bonfire, get the Poplar to the hand. Poplar going to activate, Special Summon, activate, getting himself the original Sinful Spoils, because they always come back for seconds. They're going to link this up into the Link Rebo. They're going to activate the poplar, just set it in the back, we know how this goes, activate the real sinful spoils, get that thing out of here, special summon the ash, activate the ash effect, and I didn't decide to stop it yet. Yeah, we have the dangerous gabu, but it is what it is, because I didn't know exactly what was happening, so I decided to do it now, right? Now that he has the fire king, um, Okanis, we're going to negate that with the dangerous gabu. Stop that right there. He's gonna activate the Kirin to pop it, basically dodging the effect. But no, we're gonna activate the Super Poly here, which essentially still dodges the effect. But I don't want her getting popped because if she gets popped, they get an extra fire body on the field. We don't want that. So we're gonna go into the Moon Dragon here. He doesn't get to pop anything, but he does pop the um the baby chicken. What's the thing's name again? The the Ponex, right? So then the Fire Kirin also gets popped. Now he's going to activate the Kirin's effect, he's going to activate Garunix, but you did activate something in response to my Punk card, which means that they, the Jam Dragon Drive gets to come back onto the field, Garunix gets to special summon itself, again Jam Dragon Drive comes back onto the field, the Kirin gets to activate special summon the Ponix, they're going to get rid of the Jam Dragon Drive, which is kind of smart, I mean, yeah, because if he doesn't do that, then I get to pay light points and basically search a card and then draw a card, so he doesn't want that. 
So here he's gonna activate the Garunek in the opponent. Garunek's gonna activate. We don't even care because he pops an Arvada. It's not like they can do much of with that. He's gonna get himself the Fire King Sanctuary, activate the Arvada to special summon the Volcanics. But again, I'm perfectly fine with that. He's gonna make a Nightmare Phoenix here. So he activates the Nightmare Phoenix. Nightmare Phoenix activates. Send a card to the graveyard. Pop our field spell. Draw a card. I'm gonna make the Psychic King Punisher a little beefier. He slaps into it. And this guy knows what he's doing. He's actually smart. Because all you have to do against this thing is get your light points lower than me and you're fine. So now he gets to use all three of these monsters which... Weird decision. But I mean I guess since he already went into the battle phase. He makes an Appaloosa, he can negate four monsters. He has less light points than me, he's gonna activate this thing's effect. I'm guessing he thought I didn't have anything to negate or stop this from happening. So he's gonna activate that but he can negate it with the Appaloosa. So I don't know exactly why he went into the Appaloosa. Because I feel like he could have made Promethean Princess place, no? He's going to pop a Kiri and get himself a Nokanis back to the hand. Set down a, a back and then his turn. So here we draw into a CMM, which is the most beautiful card that I could have drawn into. We're going to play the 600, but we're, we're going to get it, which I'm fine with it. I'm exactly, completely fine with that, that's exactly what I wanted, because now we activate the Jam Dragon Drive, you activate an effect in response to one of my punk cards, so now he also has to negate that. So now he's up with zero attack, I'm going to activate the Psychic Camp Punisher, and I had a feeling because the field was glowing that that was an infinite impermanence. Now the crazy thing about this is, is that yes, he could have negated this and I probably would have lost the duel, but as of right now, from me paying the thousand light points, we have equal light points, which means this thing is unaffected from your infinite impermanence. <laughs> so we nothing happens to us, we banish both of the cards and then we get to slap into the Appaloosa for game, which would have been GG. That was insane. Because if I don't draw into the, the CM and if I draw into any monster that I can normal summon, I, I can't get my light points lower, then I get the psychic can punish, I probably lose the duel. So with that being said, let's continue. Yes, sir, here we are for the last replay of the day. And we're going first against Runic. I mainly just wanted to show you this one to also show you the other type of end ball that you can end on. So we're just gonna do the regular punk combo. We're gonna push you some shark aside with the piano, activate, use both of these monsters from the hand to go into the rising card. But it's always nice when you can leave the shark aside onto the field, because you're gonna get an extra body while doing the combo, jab, drag, and drive. Activate it, pay the taxes, activate the deer note, bring the rising card back onto the field because you could always use your level 8 as materials to ritual summon, which is why this deck works so well together. We're gonna join to the Nebiru, banish the deer note, special summon the Baran Spider, join to another card, <laughs> join to the preparations of right, getting ourselves the players of the voices voice, getting ourselves the score guardian here. So after doing our board, now we get to play the other engine. Send the foxes into the graveyard as material for, to make the score guardian. And did we even normal summon yet? We haven't even normal summon. We haven't even normal summon. Activate the score guard and get the low. Now we're gonna use both of these monsters to go into the stack you can't punish her. You could make the IP here if you want. Normal summon the low, getting ourselves the barrier, activate the barrier, getting ourselves the service. Now we're gonna activate the blessings. Now mind you, mind you. We could have made IP here, we could have made SP, we could have activated this thing, sent two of the spells back into the deck, made Baron de la Flore, and if you're wondering why I didn't do all of that, it's because his field kept glowing, and I didn't want it to be something stupid that would have stopped me from doing all of that, because I would have to get rid of the Omni Negate that we have on the field. So he's gonna activate the Harpy's Feather Dust, and we're gonna negate that because I like my back row. He's gonna activate the Ruined Freezing Curse, he can't target any of these, so he's gonna target the Shark aside. He's gonna banish three cards off of the deck, which is fine with us. Thing and negated and destroyed. Our boy would have been nasty if I wasn't worried about what the heck was happening. So here he's gonna activate the Runic Flash and Fire. We're gonna activate the Shark aside. We know it's negated, but we get to draw a card off of this. As he special summons the Gary, he's gonna activate the Mr. Magna Hunt, banishing the Foxy Toon from the graveyard. Bring it out here. So here we're gonna draw into the Surf Sa Sapphira. I don't know why I have trouble doing that. And he's gonna go into the Chaos Angel. He's gonna activate the Chaos Angel to banish the barrier, but we have a dangerous Gabu, so we get to negate that thing. Stop that right there. 
And now we're gonna get life points. Unfortunately, you have to be careful with doing this thing when Psychic Camp Punisher is on the field. Luckily, our life points are 100 less than his still, so we don't have to worry about anything. But he doesn't have any more follow up, he can't even go into the battle phase. But I wanted to show you one of the other balls that you can end up on. Even though, like I said, we could have made IP, we could have made Barone de la Flor, we could have made SP Little Knight if we want to, we could have done a bunch of different things with this board, but I was worried about what the heck was flashing while I was doing the combo. So let's continue. All right, familiar. So this is the deck list. Those were the replays. This deck is actually really freaking cool. Now, is it good? Yes and no. Yes, it's good. You could definitely climb with it. I'm telling you, you can. The only thing that's bad about it is that it's prone to hand traps. The uh, nowadays when I make some of the punk engines that I make, um, the punk engine just is just most of the time you want to go first with it so you could draw into the other engine. And if you have emergency teleport, you could always just use whichever engine you want and then go into the punk engine. But the main problem is that the punk engine is susceptible to a bunch of shenanigans Ash, Drill and Lockbird, Infinite Impermanence. Veiler, even Ghost Bell sometimes, the Ogre itself, if they pop our field spell, it's prone to almost every hand trap in the game. So that is the only issue with it. And not to mention that even Voiceless Voice is prone to hand traps as well, because if you have a low and that's all you have and they ask that, you might not have follow up. So that is the main dice downside to the deck. So in the ratios out of, out of 10, I'll give this deck like a 6.5 out of 10, mainly because it suffers a lot from getting hit with hand traps. That's the only issue. Other than that, this deck goes stupid. You make so many different boards, you have so many different interactions, extensions and all that is insane. But again, you're prone to a lot of hand traps. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Again, if you did, please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Any comment, questions, and concerns in the comment section, I try to always reply. Continue having a great day, and I'm going to catch you guys next time. Peace!